NCAA Championship Basketball doubleheader. The Western Kentucky Hilltoppers are the visiting team and will appear on the scoreboard as the visitors. And starting at forward for Western Kentucky, a 6'9 senior from Cincinnati, Ohio, number 33, Kennard Johnson. For the West Virginia Mountaineers, at forward, 6'7 sophomore from Washington, D.C., number 24, Daryl Cruz. At forward, for the Hilltoppers, 6'10 senior from Gary, Indiana, number 42, Tellus Frank. At the other forward spot for the Mountaineers, a 6'8 junior from Alexandria, Virginia, number 53, Tyrone Shaw. At center for the Hilltoppers, 6'8 senior from Alexander City, Alabama, number 55, Clarence Martin. At center for the Mountaineers, 6'9 senior from Middletown, New York, number 23, Daryl Pinkney. At a guard spot for the Hilltopper, 6'1 sophomore from Baltimore, Maryland, wearing number 11, Kirk Lee. At guard for the Mountaineers, 6'1 senior from Highland Park, Michigan, number 14, J.J. Crawl. For the Hilltopper, at the other guard spot, 6'3 sophomore from Minneapolis, Minnesota, number 23, Brent McNeil. For the Mountaineers, it guards six, seven, senior from Montreal, Canada, number 50, Wayne Yearwood. The head coach of the Hilltoppers, Murray Arnold. West Virginia coach, Gail Catlett. Two of the very best coaches in college basketball set to square off tonight and will return with the opening tip-off right after these messages. We are live from the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York. Tonight's officials, Tom Scott, Sonny Holmes, and Ron Spittler. Right. Representatives of the Big East, the Big Eight, and the Southeast Conference. And when you talk about winning basketball programs, Bill, look no farther than Murray Arnold at Western Kentucky. Uh, down there, Chris, it didn't start it at all with the red towel, but uh, very well thought of coach in Murray Arnold. And of course, for West Virginia, seventh consecutive seasons with 20-plus victories. Gail Catlett, he simply continues to churn them out year in and year out. Set to go, the opening tip goes to Western. Tell us Frank with the basketball. Kirk Lee's been playing very well at a Dunbar. Well-known high school in Baltimore. Done a good job running the club, so McNary's on the pines. Little baseline jumper will fall for Kennard Johnson. That's that inside power that they have. They'll try and speed it up a little, force West Virginia to up-tempo. J.J. Kroll. He's the playmaking point guard for West Virginia. See a lot of inside scoring for West Virginia as well. Baseline jumper, Yearwood rattles the iron, and look who skies. Wow, does Clarence Martin get in the air? Uh, he and Pickney be a heck of a wrestling match with it. Number 23 in white, now Pickney, and of course, Clarence Martin, big, strong player. Tell us, Frank, high arching jump shot won't fall. Cleared out by West Virginia. Underneath, tipped away by Tellus Frank. Rebound comes to Martin, out quickly. Here come the Hilltoppers on the wing. Pulls up, jump shot, McNeil, not there. And here come the Mountaineers coming the other way. Crawl. A little sloppy right now. Not a bad crossover there by Tyrone Shaw. West Virginia will look for the break. Take the good one. Won't force it wildly. Inside, jump shot is up, rattles the rim and falls through. Basket is good for Daryl Prue. Boy, is that a perfect follow-up to what we said about Prue at the beginning of the game. His ability to hang after the back screen, hang, dip a little, Daryl, 
the kiss. Pretty good start, huh? Well, he got to step around Kennard Johnson like the big guy was not even on the court. Uh, he has struggled from the free throw line, and his technique is not bad. Struggled isn't the word. 39% from that line. I know, he's just doing something different. He's taking the right hand off the ball completely. I don't know if there's a lane violation. No, it's a foul. On Tellus Frank. And that uh, gets Murray Arnold off the uh, Western Kentucky bench. And again, an out-of-bounds play under their own basket for the Mountaineers. Same play. The left screen. Now Prue faking his other passing to him on the foul line. Crawl with the basketball. He's the quarterback on this Mountaineer ball club. Western man to man. Each sequence. In the lane to Prue. Left hand. Not hard enough. Rebound. West Virginia. Oh, oh what a block by Martin. McNeil on the wing. Picked up nicely by Yearwood. Good shape up by Martin. Martin spins, puts it off the glass hole. Oh. Worry about strength there, Phil? Take your whole front line up with him. I'll tell you, Martin and Pinkney, they're going to go at it all night long. They could be nose tackles on any NFL team. Imagine the equipment on them, what they look like. 2-1-2 no two, two set. Give me an offensive pick. Tell us Frank. Oh, no. All for his second Gee. personal. A lot of exchanges in low. Murray Arnold upset. Maybe destroyed. That puts him in a hole right away. Third inbounds from under their own basket. Now another whistle sounds as there's some pushing and shoving going on. And as we said in the opening of our telecast, Bill, we thought that possibly could be the case with two teams who love to play inside. Well, they take up so much space, too. They're all trying to intersperse here. A red and a white shirt. They haven't played in a while, as you see by that graphic. Pinkney baseline releases. Little jump shot by Crawl. Won't fall. Rebound West Virginia. And now he's got a foul and traveling on Tyrone Shaw. I think Kirk Lee got a piece of that shot by J.J. Crawl. A lot of empty trips, huh? Well, both teams, as we documented, love the inside game. Almost turnover for Western Kentucky. They better hurry. McNeil across the timeline. Takes it to the foul line. Now this is off to Frank. Dallas has it blocked from behind. What a move by Daryl Prue. Here come the Mountaineers. Good control. That's their strength. Recognition. They got it, they'll go. Little shuffle cut screen. Shape up in the lane by Prue. Good luck. Great bounce pass to Prue. Rattles around the rim and fall. Pickney with a nice catchable bounce pass. Four points for Pickney. Trap three quarter and then over the half court line. Ellis Frank, good move on Prue. And a shot wouldn't fall. He's going to be a Martin, I'm guessing. He just has people pushed aside. Now don't look for either of these teams that put it up from the three point range. <laughs> you've got some numbers on them. They don't do it well nor often, do they? Nor do they when you've got front lines like these clubs have. Well, you notice Martin got that foul just because of his body. He just nudges people, they move three feet. Prue, now way out on top to Yearwood. Little we'll double screen. Releases on the baseline. Crawl trying to go baseline. Spins and turns. Peek the inside up and over everybody. Shot won't go. And just look at the way Clarence Martin went up for that basketball. <laughs> it's his. You can have it, big fella. Kirk Lee. He is some man, isn't he? Clarence Martin. He wants to turn. Now does so over Pinkney. Oh, he fills it up. I think he got hit, too. Forced it, thinking he got hit. Or Martin, that's four points on tonight. And Western Kentucky leads by two with 15.53 to play. First half action. Little curl. Pretty play. Prove. Oh, oh, what a play. He is smooth. Washington, D.C. 
A half dozen for Prue. West Virginia runs some nice sets against that man to man. A lot of trapping by West Virginia back into the zone. Baseline jumper. Bernard Johnson, probably the best offensive player of the three. Frank a little better on the perimeter. And not only does he shoot well, Bill, a tremendous shot blocker and rebounder. Nice Pulls play. up, lets it fly, and that's two for Yearwood. His first two of the night, and he has not played well recently. Well, they make some nice cuts to the post and then give it off to their teammate, West Virginia. You may see a little more zone as the game goes on. This continues by Western Kentucky. Kirk Lee's shot won't go. Rebound with a Mountaineer. With a chance to take a lead, we're tied at eight. Yearwood, top of the lane, now turning his Pinckney. Will scream down out of this set. <laughs> Yearwood, off the glass, will not fall. Oh, what a rebound by Pinckney. He got to gather, reach, and bring it back. Whew. Awesome. Of course, with our luck, we get those two guys mad at us, right, Martin and Pinckney? <laughs> wow. Of course, the long kiss shot now. You'll just see the extension to gather it and able to bring Martin up as well. Release the basketball. Foul is on Clarence Martin. Checking into the game now is Brian Asbury. He will replace Clarence Martin. Pinckney to the line. Well, that's been a problem for Murray Arnold in the games that I've been involved with him. The front line seems to have those foul difficulties. Martin with three, and you mentioned Tellus Frank with two. It's a rough start. That free throw has given the Mountaineers their first now That's a mistake. Of the night. Okay, he got it right. So the lane violation. And the lane violation is on Yearwood. Timeout on the court. Score, West Virginia 9, the Hilltop. We'll be back. It's West Virginia out on top by one. And certainly one of the men responsible for that is the big forward for the Mountaineers, Daryl Prue, Bill. But the shape up. He's cute and clever. And of course, Gail Catlett indoctrinates his club. Get it in. And they look and they make that entry pass beautifully. Tell you what, he's going to be employed by Gail Catlett for a couple of years to come. Prue only a sophomore and plays uh, way beyond his years. You know, Gail is an underrated coach. I mean, I've seen a little bit more of him this year, particularly the Temple games on TV. And, of course, I had the Notre Dame game or had the opportunity to watch them. They are a tough club, and he does a great job. Good, no look, baseline pass. Ball still being tipped around, and the Mountaineers come down with it. McNeil tries the way now, gives it up to Tellus Frank. He goes over everybody. How in the world did he get that one to go with Pinkney in his chest? Well, more kids can do that. Get bumped, hang, and deliver. Here's a little switch now. Almost a triangle and two. So check it out. Yep, they're going to make West Virginia play a three-man game. They do pretty effectively. Shot won't go. And Tyrone Shaw is screaming at the baseline official for a foul and won't get it. McNeil inside, baseline as it tipped away, and out come the Mountaineers. J.J., the controls. Little zone by West Virginia caused the turnover. Let's see how they handle this triangle in two. They'll try and take the guards out of the game. Man to man. Look at that jump shot. Won't go. Three-point range by Yearwood. And down come the Hilltoppers. Wayne's not making him. I just see Herbie Brooks up, so you might see the old hook. Oh, ball oh. away, baseline. Oh. Jumper, yes. Oh. Bernard Johnson with four. <laughs> Major League, wasn't it? A fadeaway. Underneath, wide open. His blue turns, reverses, won't go. Ball's on the floor. He does that very well. He'll ball fake around the man. The man will turn and he'll shoot. Darryl Proof. And again, the Mountaineers will set it up. Pinkney, top of the key, releases baseline. We're all trying to get it in. Can't do it. All alone, top of the oh. key. Is Shaw, and he'll go all the way. Goodness, Pinkney tied up. Brian Asbury, you have to be in the weight room for a couple of years to do that.
Almost knocked away, and West Virginia does come up with the errant basketball crawl. So the numbers. Oh, look at the no-look pass. Underneath, it is there. Yearwood. That is walking with the basketball. Good recognition by Crawl. I know Shaw made the pass, but he looked up, was going to control it, saw they could outnumber Western Kentucky, and did so. Western with a one-point lead, 12-11, with 12 minutes and 13 seconds to play in the first period. Great New Zealand across the timeline, almost fouled. Look at that shot, Asbury, and he's fouled on the way. A lean-in, he's getting even with Daryl Pitney, but the, the whole sequence set up by Brett McNeil, the nice dribble between the trap, right on the money, and of course, lean in to protect. And that big body, you can do a lot of protecting. Asbury, six feet, six and a half inches, 240 pounds. He's a senior, played with Tellus Frank at Gary Indiana's Lou Wallace High School. They've been playing together about seven years now. Yeah. High school and college. A lot of wins for these two. Of course, Clem Haskins recruited a lot of these players. And only a guy with Murray Arnold's personality would come in and pay full compliment to Clem Haskins and keep everybody. All the kids were delighted, felt very comfortable, and have enjoyed playing for him. And he's respected. Walking. Steps up. He is walking with the basketball. Dragged that pivot foot before he uh, let loose of the basketball. And Tyrone Shaw with a turnover. Ball to Western Kentucky. They lead it by four. And to finish the thought, Murray Arnold has paid homage to Clem Haskins. He's handled it beautifully. No ego involved. Tell us Frank pulls up, lets it fly from 16, and fills it up. Smooth. Boy, tell us Frank. Six feet, 10, 225 pounds, and tremendous agility. They start out now, man to man. Earlier, I thought they had a little triangle in two. Straight up man, they're just matching to the set, two, one, two. Shaw trying to go baseline. What a move! Oh, the big man spins around Tellus Shaw and comes up with two. He wants to show Liddell Eccles, his old teammate at San Jacinto, he can play. Blocked by Pinkney. Mountaineers cannot come up with a basketball. Now do. It is Prue who clears it out. J.J. Craw across the timeline. Inside, Pinkney's going to try and turn. Instead, releases. It is Daryl Prue. Now, and the Mountaineers playing terrific team basketball. That's eight points. Why can't he shoot free throws? You see that stroke? Well, you have to believe, Bill, that it's perhaps more psychological oh, than anything else. Absolutely. Coaches agree. He's Steps. walking. Yeah. He's walking. Can't use a crossover move. Coaches are going to strike that from the arsenal. Every time you use a crossover, it's called a walk. Block is stopped with 10 minutes and 26 seconds to play. Substitution for West Virginia. Wayne Yearwood is coming into the ball game. Daryl Prue will check out. Our West Virginia, 23 and seven this year, 17 and four in conference play. And a second to Temple in the Atlantic 10. And meet Temple at Temple once this year. No easy task. Where's John Cheney won the major one, the one that counts. Good control by West Virginia and pretty good defense by Western Kentucky. Yearwood on the wing, sends it in now to Pinkney. He looks underneath, can't find anybody. Turn, stops, jump shot by Herbie Brooks. Now thus far with 9 minutes and 42 seconds to go, we have had five ties and the lead has changed hands four times. Kirk Lee. Now underneath, baseline. Nice. What a pass. Wasn't Ryan it pretty? Kennard showing you a couple of other things he can do. Excellent look. The extra pass, unselfish. A lot of kids say when they shoot the jump shot or go up for it, well, I didn't see it. You can see anybody looking at that rim. Asbury doing what the big guy should do. Get down underneath, ready to pound. Going to the line. It is Brian Asbury. 61% free throw shooter. Yes. 
Long ball. Western Kentucky 19. The Mountaineers of West Virginia 17 with 9.20 to play in the first half. Game McNary has now checked into the ball game. Underneath the basket, it is Tyrone Shaw tries to turn. Can't do it. Kirby Brooks releases the call, and the Mountaineers will set it up once more. Now, fundamentally, man-to-man -man defense. They use great principles. Got to catch the ball. A break for West Virginia. He's out of bounds. Well, take a look at that control. Now everybody's down. The dance will officially begin. And it is Brett McDeal who will spin the hits. Here come the Hilltoppers. Good what a great no-look pass. McNary charging. You can't leave your feet. And they had the numbers, too. Well, that was a play where, where your kids play soccer. Everybody runs after the ball. About eight players after it. Nobody looking for one another. Well, both teams abandoning their game plan momentarily with 8.49 to play in the first half. It's the Hilltoppers by a pair. Western Kentucky out in front of the Mountaineers of West Virginia, 19 to 17. This telecast is presented by authority of the NCAA. Any use of the program without written consent is prohibited. The announcers for this program have been approved and contracted by NCAA Productions. Transportation arrangements provided through Fugazi International Travel, the official travel agency for all NCAA championships. Both teams shooting exceptionally well thus far with eight minutes and 44 seconds remaining in the first half. Three pointers have uh, not figured into this ball game at all. Inside, little left-handed roll, it is good. He knows Prue has two more. He certainly knows the game down there, doesn't he? He's got 10. McNary hawked out in front, releases the ball, now back to McNary. Good trap. Of course, it opens it up almost like a fast break, too. If you don't exploit it, it'll punish you, but when you go after them, you get the numbers. Yearwood lets it fly, and he fills it up. West Virginia by two. Good step for by James McNary. McNary, good pass inside. And Johnson got a step and made him pay. We're tied at 21. Hey, a little combo defense. We've seen a lot of that today. Guys following sometimes, sometimes staying. Here we go again. <laughs> hey, some of these bodies could play football and go for fumbles. But I tell you. Jerry West, former great West Virginia guard, said not long ago that he felt that three of these Hilltoppers could possibly go in the first couple of rounds of the NBA draft. Mm -hmm. They need bulk. Don't go after these fellas. Johnson, Tellus Frank, Clarence Martin. For speaking of Jerry West, a segue into West Virginia and their outstanding guards over the years, Hot Rod. Hudley, Rod Thorne, and Chris Steel Cat would play back when Jerry played, and they believe in restoring the great days of those people. And he's done a wonderful job doing it. Carlos Frank comes up with a basketball, and here comes McNary out quickly. Here's the zone. Inside, Johnson spins, releases the ball to Asbury, and the three-pointer. Asbury looks like he's trimmed down. He's able to stay up a little bit longer. The type of body you don't want to bang into, but they are a good passing team. They look for one another. Denard Johnson, another good dump, just like before. Up for the shot, see somebody in a better spot. Ryan Asbury off the front of the rim, skying forward his crew. And here come the Mountaineers. Tries to go baseline, <laughs> puts it up. Hey, what a shot. They all like to throw, fake that pass. You notice? Well, it's like a trick play, a globy play. Tyrone able to nail it. Six points for Shaw. McNary across the timeline. 
Little scoop pass comes off the backboard to the Mountaineers. And out quickly. Here is Steve Berger. Backs McNary down. That's going to be an offensive foul against Berger, I believe. Well, one official has it against Berger. The other on McNary. I, I think it was the right call to charge. Double only foul. because you can call a charge without Double being in position. In, in other words, you don't have to be in, You just have to establish the lane. And if a guy keeps running at you, even if you're moving backwards... They're going to call a double foul. Okay, and a change of possession. It's going to remain West Virginia basketball. Well, that's the one thing officials hate to have. It's a communication problem. And, of course, one should wave the other off. That's what they're looking for. He's moving back. Now, you can move and still pick up the charge, according to Hank Nichols, who coordinates the officiating. And I'm sure if Hank's looking, he's only disturbed that the officials didn't look one another off and defer, because I think good communication is necessary. Yeah. I mean, as any basketball fan knows, Bill, it has to be one or the other. It's right. either a charge or it's a block. It can't be both. Well, I used to tease the officials when I was on the Pines. I thought we needed one official for each pair of players. <laughs> you know, we needed five out there to <laughs> keep control. But under the circumstances, they do a great job. We're tied at 23. 6.42 to play in the first half. Tyrone Shaw, top of the key, looking underneath, finds no one. And now the Mountaineers will set it up. A lot of clubs are doing that. They zoned the out-of-bounds, then regained position, and went man-to-man, -man, Western Kentucky. A burger in really ups the tempo for West Virginia. Shaw trying to spin, lays it off the glass, and again, whistle sound, traveling hey, Ty, on Shaw. He's got some moves in there, doesn't he? I mentioned he's out of sand. Jacinto, and of course, Liddell Echols at University of New Orleans, who's in the NCAA under Benny Dees, and then he's going to be playing Alabama, where he used to work with Whip Sanderson. Now turnovers thus far, West Virginia with a half dozen. Yet we're tied, 23 apiece. Good McNary has it taken away by West Virginia. What a play by Herbie Brooks. Oh, the trap set that up. McNary couldn't step through, couldn't find somebody. That's McNary. Tries to go baseline, pulls up, lets it fly over Brew, bounces around the iron, and a foul is called. Sure, they're pushing away. Got tagged for it. The tendency of anybody when someone's in front of you shove them out of the way whether it's the bread line or for hamburgers <laughs> <laughs> Tyrone bigger but little just a nudge and of course with Esbury it's a subway special Dallas Frank too much tips little out the Mountaineers come down and they're running again Berger will run the show look it underneath kicks it outside in the lane. Oh, Herbie Brooks. Pass? You call it. I think it was a miss. How about you, Phil? <laughs> You'll ruin his assist. Wow. They're going to give it to Yearwood. Catlin's over there. He couldn't believe that one either. What a good job of the traps, causing problems. Almost got that turnover. West Virginia by four. And Daryl Pinckney, the chairman of the board, is moving back in. Whatever he wants. Soft-spoken, too. Looks mean and tough. Gentle when you speak to him. Mellis Frank tries to bounce it back out on the outlet pass and can't get it there. Intercepted by West Virginia. Out quickly. Here comes Yearwood. Western Kentucky not valuing the basketball very well, are they? Well put. A lot of empty trips. There's that curl play. Going the other way. That's a pretty little play. Usually Prue running off the double. Good shape outside. Prue wants to spin. What a move. Oh, what a move. He laid on Kennard Johnson. Well, Kennard was asleep from beginning to end. He didn't deny... A little duck in, and of course, then the easy move to the goal. Six straight for West Virginia. And there is Tellus Frank, oh. and there's goaltending. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Daryl Pinckney, he had one hand in Syracuse and the other one in Albany. <laughs> what a wingspan. 
There's a timeout on the court. 425 to play in the first half. It's West Virginia 29. The Hilltop 25. Both teams shooting well over 50%. West Virginia with a four-point lead, Bill. Well, Darrell Prue ducking in. You see the lazy defense by Kennard Johnson. This is unexpected by Western Kentucky, and he's six for eight for 12 points. Down the other end, you enjoyed this. The tremendous wingspan picking an easy call for the officials. Spread eagle. Back to live action, 4.22 remaining in the first half. It's the Mountaineers by four, and they own the basketball. Looks like a 1-2-2 two, two now. <laughs> Left-handed. Hey, what a shot oh, by Prue. He's and a jump he man. 14. He's a funny release. Gets himself into a hole. He's a scorer. Look at this pressure. I think McNary and McNeil have to just go over the top on that trap. Don't dribble into it. Look deep. Let, let the people turn and go trap in the corner. Ray Swagger has run into the ball game. Shot by Kennard Johnson. Rebound by the Mountaineers. No. Kentucky came down with it. You know what happened there? Prue is being tagged for the foul, but Asbury shot the ball into the backboard and then came down. I don't think he released it. It could have been a walk. When I play, we used to call that up and down. <laughs> exactly. But unfortunately for West Virginia, Darrell Prue. Asbury with seven. And he'll shoot two here with 343 remaining in the first half. Now, these two clubs have met previously on only two occasions. And both times. West Virginia has come out on top. In fact, the last time they met, ironically, 1959, Bill, when the Mountaineers went all the way to the championship game before losing to Pete Newell's California Golden mm -hmm. Bears. Of course, that's long before my time. It's difficult to remember. <laughs> but, uh, of course, Pete Newell, I'll take his looks and uh, way of living all these years. He's a terrific man. He's been a great contributor to basketball. Great friend of Bobby Knight's, as you know. 3.36 remaining. First half action. Berger on the wing now. 1-2-2. Two, two. Oh, In the middle it goes. There's the scoring machine. Through once, twice, won't go. And out with it is Asbury. There's a nickel dimer. Not a good one in the backcourt by Prue. Number three. And he gets free in that three-second lane, and they've been finding them. That's going to take away some of their offense. He pops in, shapes up, and, of course, they deliver the ball on time to him. Gail Catlett, West Virginia head coach, has something to say to Prue as he is on his way to the seat. Both teams with seven personal fouls. Virginia out in front by four. Now, some is in the ball game now. Out of that Philly area, Upper Dublin, good offensive player. Pretty good shooter, 15 feet in, very active, and I think they need some offense with Prue out. Now the question is, can Semish be effective with that uh, left hand heavily taped? Had a rubberized cast on it yesterday during workouts. We'll find out right away. Doesn't bother him at all, huh? Got it up on the tin. Pink tape. That's that ball fake again, you notice? What a move underneath. Shot wouldn't go. Swagger and McNeil will run the show out front now. I say it's a little confusing because Shaw's not sure what they're in. Asbury, foul call. Wayne Yearwood can't believe sure. Tyrone Shaw was running all over. He had no idea what they were in. You see him, number 53? They're pushing him. He went from one side of the lane to the other. 
And of course, I don't know if they got him underneath or not. I guess they gave it to Pinckney. Gave it to Pinckney. Yearwood is one who had his hand firmly on the ball at the uh, apex of Asbury's jump. It was on Pinckney. I'm looking over at the bench, Western Kentucky. Three starters most of the year, McNary, Martin, and tell us Frank on the bench. Good playing some people. Yeah, that's a one-point game once again. 235 remaining in the first half. West Virginia with the basketball. They lead by one. Summage has it taken away. Ball's on the floor. Kirk Lee, release, jump shot by McNeil, and he knocks it down. And Western has a one-point lead. And Ray Swagger, who was put in the ball game, made that happen. Good hustle, all-out effort. Fifth time of the ball game. We have had a lead change. We have also had a half dozen times. Summage baseline. Yearwood, top of the key. Won't go. Oh, look oh. who comes at home. It's Good. Pinkney. Good night. Send it in. Ooh. It almost Little covers. Give and go. Swagger pulls up. Off the glass. Rebound. West Virginia. And it is. I thought they may have got one on Asbury. It's going to be West Virginia's basketball. Pinkney almost blocks out the glass, doesn't he, as he approaches the rim? The human eclipse. Ooh. <laughs> One, two, two, West of Kentucky. Last few trips have been in it. Without proof, hasn't been as easy for West Virginia. Summage looking inside, finds no one. J.J. Crawl from three-point range, no. Summage comes down with the basketball. A minute 18 to play first half. Nice look. Tyrone Shaw in close off the glass. Not and a, West Virginia is now out to a three-point lead. So not a bad screen fill inside by Semish, holding off Kennard Johnson. Backcourt, yeah. Tom Scott right on top of it. They've had difficulty out at the half court line. You've got to look ahead. Now, both teams have had a, a moderate amount of problems uh, with their footing out there. And I know out, out there yesterday, just shooting around a little bit, Bill. Uh, this is a very, very slippery surface here at the Carrier Dome. Well, these are players. Uh, if you're comparing yourself to talent, <laughs> I mean, that is a vast difference. But uh, you're right. They, they have had some difficulty on occasion. They're stopping and cutting, though. You were gliding. <laughs> the zone's been good to Western Kentucky. Forcing the deeper shot, taking away some of the inside game for West Virginia. 35 seconds remaining, first half. Summit baseline. And the Mountaineers will play for one, or as close as they can get. Only nine seconds left on the shot clock. A bad play by Eric. One-handed it. Out quickly, here come the Hilltoppers. And loose on the ball is Kirk Lee. Got to hand it to J.J. Crawl, though. He came over. Kirk Lee thought he could turn the corner. Good alert play by J.J. Crawl. Right in front of us, Yearwood will put it in play. 16, 15 seconds remaining. First half action. West Virginia 35, Western Kentucky 32. West Virginia would like one inside, I think, so they get to the free throw line. Just like, Brooks. just like I said. Shot won't go, follow, not allowed. The buzzer sounds, and we have reached the end of the first 20 minutes of basketball. The Mountaineers of West Virginia and Western Kentucky banging it out. It looks like a heavyweight fight. We'll be back after these messages and a word from your local station. Well, we thought it perhaps would be Ali and Frazier, and that's exactly what it has turned out to be. West Virginia with the muscle inside, Western Kentucky with the behemoths on the front line, and it is a three-point game at halftime. And now my cohort, <laughs> Bill Rafferty, standing uh, by with our special guest. Thank you very much, Bill. An old friend, his dad's a Hall of Famer from Seton Hall, of course, Frank Delaney, with Jim Delaney, Ohio Valley Commissioner, and your job at these sites, Jimmy. Uh, they're to work closely with the people who do all the work, and that is uh, Jake uh, Krauthammel's staff here at the uh, Carrier Dome. Uh, I don't know, this is the second event they've hosted here for the NCAA, and 
they're really well prepared but I work with the TV people and we evaluate the officials and uh, the NSA has uh, consistent procedures throughout the country at the eight sites and our attempt really is is to provide the same playing opportunities uh, here Provo Utah Birmingham wherever so that the players and the coaches are, are really competing under the same uh, same standards why is it you never ask me to evaluate the officials I might have a little tainted look <laughs> well, we know you evaluate the officials <laughs> Excuse me, that's the one air. of our concerns <laughs> but Jimmy are they evaluated singly or as a group they're, they're we tell the officials your best shot is to advance as a crew we want to encourage teamwork but we have the option of either advancing them as crew or as individuals what we do is we get together and get a fix on a game after each game calculate the difficulty how they worked as a group were they up to the game was it a tough game and then as we move along we evaluate them absolutely and then uh, against each other relatively jimmy quick have you heard from Betty crump yeah the coach Crump <laughs> and i talked on the telephone the other day had a nice uh, had a nice discussion and decided it's time to let the players play and the coaches coach and forget about uh, forget about the Pants transgressions thanks absolutely. a lot jimmy congratulations to you and thanks, standing by <laughs> phil <laughs> all right phil thanks for that lively uh, interview we'll be back with more halftime activities after these messages from your local station west virginia out in front of western kentucky 35 to 32 second half is upcoming here all along our ncaa television network bill rafter is standing by with the president of the university of west virginia bill of course dr buckle o'neill you've got to be excited with your club oh i am this has been a good first half uh, you traditionally at West Virginia have had outstanding basketball and of course as a youngster you used to sneak in not pay for your tickets I'm told I get a little heat for that but that's true Morgantown is my hometown and West Virginia has always been my team I'm always sympathetic to gentlemen with gray hair <laughs> uh, and I'm guessing were you down there with Hot Rod Hudley or Jerry West uh, Jerry West but I knew Hot Rod Hudley I sure watched him play we, we were talking during the ball game about your coach Gail Catlett and of course he did an outstanding job every place he's been but in a way, he's sort of an unsung coach. He wins 20 every year, and here they are in the NCAA once again. Well, that's true. I think he doesn't get all the uh, uh, recognition he deserves, but he gets it in Morgantown in West Virginia. They know that he's the cat. They really like him. And how's the bear, Freddie Shout? Oh, he's a great man, isn't he? He's first class. I couldn't feel better having him as athletic director. Well, you got a lot of nice people down there. I'm sorry you weren't my president. I'd still be coaching, I oh, think. There you go. <laughs> Thank you very much, Thank Dale. You. Bill? All right, Bill. Thank you very much. Both teams remaining in their respective locker rooms as the second half is about seven and a half minutes underway. West Virginia leading the Hilltoppers by three. We'll be back. Here at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York, Phil Stone with Bill Raftery and thus far, full oh man, it has been a wild one. Bill, courtside with another special guest. Bill? Well, the president of Western Kentucky, I've talked to more presidents. I wish my own president had talked to me. Kern Alexander of Western Kentucky, a basketball rich tradition at your school yes well we're a basketball school and we're proud of it mm -hmm. we've had good basketball over the years and it served us well and and western has a good reputation in that regard you know what impressed me when murray arnold took over in, in your program and you think of clem haskins what a great job and the way murray handled it so diplomatically and in a humble fashion murray's done a wonderful job he had a transition there to carried through on and did a fine job we're proud of him he kept the boys there and has developed them and things have gone well for us i know all presidents like to get into basketball a little how should they handle this half court pressure well i would go over it and throw it down to the corners and <laughs> take that shot from the corner <laughs> uh, of course the big guys have a little foul problem it's got to be a concern for you and murray we're concerned uh, we're concerned about that uh, press and uh, getting out of it stepping through it but I think we'll be all right second half. This West Virginia team is a big, tough, fine ball team, and I'm very much impressed with it. Of course, as an old Ed Diddle fan, uh, remember Western Kentucky when I was a baby. It's great to spend some time with you. Well, good to be here with you, Bill. Thank you very much. Thanks for dropping by, Kern, and now back to Phil Stone. All right, Bill, Western Kentucky making its 13th trip in the NCAA tournament waters. We'll return for the second half after these messages. This is an NCAA Productions telecast from the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York, where West Virginia out in front of Western Kentucky, 35 to 32. And Bill Raftery, certainly it has been the play of a man by the name of Shaw, Tyrone Shaw, that really got things going early for West Virginia. Uh, Tyrone's got the ability to bounce himself free of defenders, 
He struggled a little bit with some walks, but their inside game is their strength. And here you see him spinning. Now he tries to dip under the defenders. But with he and Prue inside, it's a dynamite duo. I mean, they can really gather and do some things in tight. How about Kennard Johnson's pass uh, into he, Brian Asbury here? He's had a couple, and of course, as you note there, Asbury takes up an awful lot of space. And not a bad-looking pass, huh? Or is that the one we questioned <laughs> Herbie on? <Hunt? laughs> Well, we talked about this game at the outset, that it would be a game played uh, pretty much in the paint, and it has certainly turned out to be just that. This certainly does not look to be a, a battle of college teams. Uh, it resembles more the battles you see night in and night out at the pro level. Well, Yearwood soft enough to keep it in play there for Pickney to finish, and of course, you're right, the inside game of both teams is their strength. I think Western Kentucky's in serious trouble if they don't go over the top of the half-court press. How about field goal percentages, Bill? Identical, 52%. The free throw line belongs to Western Kentucky, yet ironically, it's the Mountaineers with the lead. Well, West Virginia has noted not a good free throw shooting team, but the turnovers have helped them maintain the lead. Now points in the paint. Unbelievable, West Virginia, 22 of their 35 points have come within 12, 14 feet of that hoop. <laughs> That certainly helps, doesn't it? But again, the philosophies of both coaches get it in, do some damage. Neither one proponents of this three-point shot, particularly Murray Arnold. He detests it, thinks it detracts from the game. You know, you go all the way back to Gail Catlett's days with the Cincinnati Bearcats, Bill, and that's pretty much how he got it done in the Queen City, in the paint. And he doesn't care who he's up against. I mean, look at the front line of Western Kentucky tonight, perhaps one of the very finest in all of college basketball, and he says, Hey, I'm not going to alter my game plan. You beat me at my game plan. He's a carver. Whatever defense you put out there, he carves it apart. And that's the success and the reason he's had it. Western Kentucky with 21 of their 32 points, also in the paint, led by Brian Asbury. The senior with 12 points. Looks like the zone again. The matchup out of it can be confusing. McNeil knocks it through, and Western answers the bell with two quick ones, and now trail by one. Two one two set, man to man. A little brush there by Yearwood. Is that duck in? Leaning, leaning, Tyrone Shaw shot, won't go. Rebound, look out, Pickney's going up, but it will not go down. I wonder if they got Martin on this one. If it is, it's number four. Yes, sir. And boy, he spends more time taking the splinters out and taking the sweatsuit on and off. Now Murray Arnold staring down at the floor. A tough decision. You know, they, you put him on the bench, he doesn't contribute. Set out most of that first half. Pinkney at the line. This is the first of two. You know, Shaw actually faked himself out of a good shot before on this sequence. Tyrone, a lot of pumping and dipping. Forgot to release it on time. Pinkney now with four. He is averaging six points a game coming in. 2-1. There's that pressure Virginia defense. Well, West Virginia, they have just played tremendous defense all year. Tell us, Frank, off the glass, touches there, shot off the mark. Good job by Yearwood getting down and helping out the big guys. Was it 6-7? He's not too small either. J.J. Crawl. Little dip by Prue. He's a smart offensive player. Not too smart on that play. Western Kentucky with a chance to tie. It's 36-34, 18-37, remaining of the ball game. Maybe like a 1-3-1. Only Prue doesn't run the baseline. Now it's shaped into a 2-3 defense. Nice side. Gunnar Johnson going to the hoop, and he is fouled. On the way up by Daryl Pickney. I sort of admire 
Well, I admire that sort of leaving Clarence Martin in the game. You know, it's a one-and-done tournament. And he really hasn't gotten into the flow of the game at all. And so I think it's a good gamble by Murray Arnold. What the heck? See what he can do out there. And you know Asbury's playing well. Now, Bill, as we discussed at the uh, outset of our telecast, for West Virginia and Western Kentucky to be effective, they were going to have to rely on uh, what brought them throughout the 86-87 season, and that is the inside game. Both teams have, have played the front line very, very effectively tonight. Hence, we have a very, very close ball game. Of course, if the guards recognize it, that's usually the team that wins. And Western Kentucky struggling a little getting it over the timeline and getting it to the big people in the spots they can do the damage. And our Johnson ties the ball game. The ninth time tonight this game has been deadlocked. A little pressure three-quarter right now by Western. Good Take job. It away. Kirk Lee slows it down right off the chest of Kennard Johnson, but look who recovers. Brett McNeil. And Murray Arnold's got them going full court now. No more three quarters. Going for it all. It's amazing, isn't it? Whatever level, almost another turnover. All the way, Daryl Prue with 16 points tonight. Very smart player. I think if he dunked that, Martin would have gotten it. Lee across the timeline. Now McNeil. Two three, it looks like now. McNeil jumper, and oh. he's got it. He is lightening it up, but he's also running to the spots, getting there quickly, and they're hitting him with it. A two-point lead for the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. Man to man. Whoops, the high dribble. Good non-call though. Yearwood turns, lets it go. Too short. Look oh. those guys. Oh my. Oh. Martin. Oh, he didn't pick me. Look at him at the front door here. McNeil, baseline, won't fall, rebound. This five, Martin. Tyrone Shaw with the rebound, and I think Martin's out of this ball game. Oh, what a blow to Murray Arnold. That's a shame, but I don't blame him for going for it. Asbury now going to be asked to do a good job, but I, I think you have to do that. I respect him for it. Why save him? He ended up doing very little in the first half for this club. Four points total for the ball game, and it's frustrating. Some of his fouls, that was a nickel dimer. He shouldn't have done it. But some of his fouls are just expanding that body and people bouncing off him. That's the ninth game this year that mm -hmm. Clarence Martin has fouled out of. And oh, what a game to have to sit down and watch. So, you know, Murray's seen both ends, right? Taking him out. Maybe he hasn't done well. So, I mean, his judgment, I defer to, and I respect it. Jump shot. Prue won't go. Out come the Mountaineers. They got the numbers. It's going to go off West Virginia. J.J. Crawl actually tapped it as it crossed the baseline. Of course, you've got to finish that break when you got four against their two. You bet. Right? It's like a wasted trip. McNeil lets it go from three-point range, and it won't fall. Now it is a wasted trip. Out quickly. Here's Shaw. He pulls up underneath the basket to Yearwood. Beat him down. They just turned and ran the floor. West Virginia. Very bad reaction. This almost ends up into a neck ball, which they call it in the schoolyard. Watch the ball get stuck between the neck and the glass. Then it pops free. Very bad reaction by Western Kentucky. Wayne Yearwood to the line. He gets the first half. Shelton now in. Hadn't seen him all night. He's played this year, average about nine minutes a game. Freshman out of Decatur, Georgia. It's there. We're tied at 40 with 16-20 remaining in the game. Two-two-one, and then West Virginia still traps as they back into their zone. 
Out on top from three-point lanes, Kirk Lee too hard, and out come the Mountaineers. Out quickly, it's Yearwood, one-on-one, -on -one. off the glass, won't fall, tip won't go. And whistle sound. Esbury. Yearwood should have passed the basketball. It was a field goal if he dumped it off. You know, Catlett jumped right on him for it. Herbie Brooks now in the ball game for him. That was an easy goal for West Virginia if he dumped it off. Inside, look at Pinkney. Look at that shot. Won't fall, but did he get up high? That one will go. That's a working club's basket. They just out scrapped Western Kentucky. Ten points for Yearwood. Correction, Tyrone Shaw. 2-3. Thomas Frank on the wing, looking inside. Now they'll go low to Kennard Johnson offside and tipped out of bounds by West Virginia. Give it back to Western Kentucky. Nice diagonal look there by Kennard Johnson. But you, you watch this ball game. Western Kentucky's been struggling, but they're right there knocking at the door. And uh, that's going to put a scare into West Virginia, I think. Well, they have not taken care of the basketball like the Hilltoppers are capable of. Mm -hmm. There is a perfect example on cue. Sheldon right through his hands. His turnovers, West, Western Kentucky with eight, West Virginia with six. Points off the turnover, pardon me. Kirby Brooks out on top. Top of the key, Prue pulls up, lets it go, and it's tipped away. Everybody want a goaltending from West Virginia. Look at this. Uh, jumper, Pickney. Showing a well-rounded offense, huh? I can step out. Six points for Darrell Pinkney. Bill Toppers across the timeline. West Virginia by four with 14.22 remaining. Hey, West Virginia, much more active, aren't they? Natty, aggressive in nature. Inside, that's Asbury. Rattles around the rim and will not fall. Now they'll get Kirk Lee for reaching in. West Virginia with a four-point lead with 14.07 remaining in the ball game. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back, second half action. We're at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse where the Mountaineers out in front of the Hilltoppers by four. Uh, this is where you have your union card. You check in, work eight hours, pay your dues, and you come up with these things. Neither team, Bill, shooting well here in the second half after uh, both West Virginia and Western Kentucky lit it up in the first 20 minutes of play. I guess you have to attribute that to pretty good defense, or at least aggressive defense. Top of the key, Pinckney wants to turn, can't do it. Boy, Pinckney and Asbury lined up on the foul line. Looks like two nose tackles. Great physiques. There's a little curl, they ran it before. Good help by Asbury with the bump. Pinckney tries to turn, now lays it inside. Up and over everybody, Tyrone Shaw is fouled. Bernard Johnson will be charged with the personal. Now that's just lazy defense against the duck in. Tell us, Frank, let the ball come in the three-second lane. You can't stop working. One guy lets down. A play like that causes Kennard Johnson to get number two. Oh, West Virginia with a very, very rich basketball heritage. You go all the way back. This is their 15th trip into NCAA tournament waters. 
last year, of course, in the first round, they were losers when Old Dominion beat them. Look for a little more up-tempo now with Steve Berger in at a boomer of West Virginia. And I know you, you've you been there. You've been all over this country. Oh, Boomer's one of my favorite little towns. I tease him by calling him Boomer. Aggressive player. Very spirited. He loves to run the break. And our Johnson across the timeline. Boy, West Virginia with that fucking style of defense. Good luck. Underneath, Asbury will fall. Oh, what a move by the big man. He is agile, isn't he? Able to hang there. That is some frame. The Dallas Cowboys years ago used to go for these type of bodies, didn't they? I'll tell you what, Billy, he had more hang time than a right guy punch. Uh, good point. Of course, Dave Jennings wouldn't like that, but right there, <laughs> the pass by Tellus Frank, and that's something that he does very well, finds people. Ryan Asbury with the first of two. West Virginia now by four. Asbury will look to cut it to three. Ryan Asbury at the foul line for Western Kentucky, and he makes a bow. It's West Virginia 45, Western Kentucky 42. Asbury now with 14 points. Bill Stone with Bill Raftery, and who have we had a dandy here at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse. 13 minutes, 20 seconds remaining in the ball game. Both clubs with great pressure defensively. Caused some force shooting. Those both are power type of teams. Like it inside. It'll give and go. There's that curl by Proof. Bernard Johnson here whacking one another. Yearwood spins, tries to throw a shot up, but in the process of going up, he was clipped by Kirk Lee. Now West Virginia. We knew they would certainly hold their own inside offensively against this talented Western Kentucky front line. They have the second, seventh best defense in all of college basketball. There's Hunt. And the one and one ball. Because they started big with Yearwood as the second guard, along with J.J. Crawl. Now they're going a little bit more with Herbie Brooks and occasionally Berger with Crawl. It's there. Pressure after the goal. 2-2-1. Two, two, They've been tough. After it crosses the timeline, they go for a little trap. That's what they've been doing a little bit better. Going over the top, Western Kentucky. Ellis Frank now sends it back out on top. Underneath, Asbury turns off the glass and it falls. And that's what that big body's for. He turned and sealed his man. Kirkley unselfishly, selfishly dumping it in. Asbury with 16 points. Coming into this ball game, he was averaging only seven a game. That's Shaw. A little ducked in by Prue. Bad pass. That's better defense by Johnson. Here comes Lee. Four on one. Pulls up. Let's it sail. Won't fall. Rebound. West Virginia. That's Berger. Off the glass as the ball gets away. Rebound. Number 32, Herbie Braun. Gives Shaw an assist. And Kirk Lee at the other end took a tough shot. He had the numbers. Ended up with a difficult one. It has been an exciting ball game since the opening tip. Up and down the court. Tellus Frank works right around Yearwood and makes him pay. Harry Arnold wants the full court pressure. Or Tellus Frank, only his eighth point. 11.25 remaining in the ball game. It's West Virginia by three. He is Prue in the paint, puts it up. Not even close, and a foul is called. Tellus Frank over the top, Phil. You got three for him? That's three on Frank. Again, that man-to-man -man occasionally. One breakdown by Western Kentucky. 
on a trip, and it's enough to put West Virginia on the free throw line or give a goal. Bill, it's no wonder the Hilltoppers are in the NCAA tournament. They returned four starters from a year ago, 11 of 13 Letterman on a team that last year was 23 and 8. You realize this is game number 37 for them? They played that preseason NIT. That's going to war a lot of evenings. Tyrone Shaw gets the first one to fall, and now it's West Virginia by four. Asbury clears. And Brett McNeil will trot across the timeline. McNary and McNeil out in top. Tellus Frank jumps into the lane, puts it up, rattles around, won't fall. And again, the Hilltoppers are coming up with one shot and one shot only. Foul is called on Johnson. Number three for him. Looked like a box and one that time. They're concerned with Brett McNeil when he's in. They're trailing him a little bit. They've had a lot of these particular plays where the ball doesn't go. Frustration sets in. Of course, active legs and Prue, a factor on both ends. We were talking before the game started, and uh, both of us agreed that with so much artillery under the baskets for both West Virginia and Western Kentucky, we thought perhaps uh, we might see a moderate amount of fouls in this game. Well, they're banging on it pretty good. West Virginia has not fouled much, though. Only two. But you see that free hand now. Darrell Prue has got to improve his free throw shooting. He's too good a player. He's now putting the ball up and taking the hand off where he has no guide hand. Unfortunately, it affects the results. Gail Catlett wants a timeout. It comes with 11 minutes to play in the ball game. West Virginia out in front of Western Kentucky, 50 to 46. Back after this. West Virginia, 50. Western Kentucky, 46. And the Hilltopper is able to show some ball movement here. And Brian Asbury, the bottom of your picture, turns and seals Kirkley, finds him. That big body, tough to get around. They need more of that. Now, one of the problems with finding more of that was that this guy right here is on the bench. Clarence Martin fouling out with 12 and a half minutes to go. Of course, a gamble by Murray Arnold. You mentioned he had fouled out of eight other games, and that is a story right there, isn't it? And it is likely to get worse in Martin's absence. Oh, Prue missed the 10. Now, this is a major league player unable to crack the iron. And I think he's terrific. In fact, down at Notre Dame, I said to him, you know, Daryl, they believe it's your girlfriend <laughs> sitting up there, and she must be very unattractive. I'll tell you. McNary underneath. What an off-balance shot by Kennard Jackson. Tell us right with the rebound. He'll put it up and in. for Tellus Frank. It's West Virginia now by two with 10.34 remaining in the game. 2-1-2. Two, two. They do that little shuffle cut. Semish at the top. From the wing. Berger won't fall. And it is the Hilltoppers with the basketball and a foul is on Berger. Set up for that 2-2-1. Two, two, R. Johnson and Daryl Prue having a conversation meant for the library. Handling the inbounds will be Ray Swaggart. In a hurry. And he did not get it in in time. Turnover out of bounds to the Mountaineers. You know what seems to happen? There's not that much of a disparity between the teams and turnovers. It's when they happen. All of a sudden, West Virginia makes a run, or excuse me, West Kentucky makes a run, and they'll do something silly. Good jumper, top of the key, Yearwood won't fall. West Kentucky has the basketball and a chance to tie. McNeil again out on top. It is McNary. Moves around his men. Gary, not a threat at all to shoot, but Swaggart has known to put it up on occasion. Won't go down. And coming off with the ball is Tyrone Shaw. Oh, 
Crawl out on top. Dale Catlett out of his chair with a fist raised in the air. Turning and firing away, Yearwood, not close. Again, it is Asbury, and the Hilltoppers will have a second opportunity in succession to tie it up. Now, the inside game, without Pickney and Prude, here's a slap and a goal. They give that to Yearwood or Semish. West Virginia unable to get it inside without those two big guys, and Western Kentucky pushing it up, getting it in deep, and of course, a guy who's been quiet for his ability. Here, Tellus Frank's got Semish, and then eventually, Yearwood down underneath. They need a big nine minutes from him, don't they? Now they will have to rely on the man at the foul line if they are to move on to round two of this NCAA basketball tournament. Tellus Frank has given the Hilltoppers a lead, and it comes with 14 to play. See if Cruz numbers called. J.J. Crawl on the wing, sends it inside now to number 53, Tyrone Shaw, and uh, Crawl is fouled by McNary. For McNary, that is his first. Excuse me, I've got four. Yep, that's got correct. You, I got you in the wrong box. So four now on McNary. Gets the first half of the one and one. And McNary playing 26 minutes a game. Hasn't played much. Going with Kirk Lee a little bit. They need a good effort from him against the pressure and getting the ball inside. Getting Frank involved a little bit. And Asbury. West Virginia wants a timeout. And it comes with nine minutes and one tick on the clock of ending in this win. From the Carrier Dome in Syracuse. The Mountaineers leading the Hilltoppers by one. Bill Stone with Bill Raftery, and there is the situation. 9-0-1 to play here at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse. West Virginia out in front of Western Kentucky by one. And take a look at points in the paint. West Virginia with 37, the Hilltoppers with 31. But it has certainly been West Virginia who has gotten the second shot in this ball game. Chris, that's as predicted. Power. There's a beauty. Brett McNeil for two. Eight minutes and 44 seconds remaining from the Carrier Dome in Syracuse. Bill Stone with Bill Raftery. Western Kentucky, 53. West Virginia, 52. Pulls up, lets a jumper fly. Herbie Brooks shot, won't fall. Good hustle by McCutt. Swagger, unfortunately, West Virginia just coming up with those. Here comes McNeil. And a foul is going to be whistled on Shaw. It's amazing, West Virginia's pursuit of the basketball far exceeds Western Kentucky's. Anything on the floor they seem to be coming up with? Looking for Daryl Pinckney, and, uh, well, here he comes now. Because they're going to play big again. Here it'll move to guard. That jump shot didn't endear Herbie Brooks to Gail Catlett. Western Kentucky, 53, West Virginia, 52, with eight minutes and nine seconds to play. 2-3, mostly zoned by West Virginia. McNeil, the Tellus Frank into the paint he goes. He puts it off the glass, won't fall, rebound to Pinckney, and a foul is called on Asbury. You wonder why sometimes players leave their hand in there. They're coming up empty, plus the foul. Asbury was beaten. They never say, nice play, good check out. Let me get a foul. This is sometimes an effort to get a breath. Oh, it's over. Why not just release and go down? Hmm. Now Pinckney to the line. He's hitting only 46% from the uh, free throw line. So between here and Daryl Prua, a good idea if they spent a summer in a gym somewhere. Nobody on the bench in the assistant coach category is taking credit for the free throw shooting. They're all denying it. 
Gail Catlett ought to try and get free throws abolished from NCAA oh. basketball. Get funny Levitt back, right? <laughs> you betcha. The old free throw shooter, Chris. His only failure was Wilt. Yeah, that's right. Tried to teach him. Thomas Frank looking inside. Boy, the Mountaineers doing a great job of clogging up that baseline. Good, re good reaction, you're right, defensively. Here's a little mix-up in defense now. McNary, rarely will he shoot. Tellus Frank is fouled by J.J. Kroll. A little dialogue, J.J. trying to fake his way out of it. At that time, Yearwood matched up man-to-man -man for people in a box, it looked like. First foul, incidentally, on uh, a little point man from West Virginia. Seven minutes and 17 seconds left in this one. Knocked out of bounds by Shaw. Hey, Gail Catlett, it looks now like a triangle in two. Tyrone Shaw on Tellus Frank, Yearwood on Brett McNeil, the other three defenders in his own. What does that defense force you to do, Bill? Well, you've got to find holes. It's almost a three on three. It takes those two people out of the game. Ideally, you don't want them to touch the ball. McNary. Releases the McNeil, and it's too much. Rebound, Swagger, and he'll take it out on top again. Tell us Frank, baseline, makes an excellent move and puts it in. Pretty basketball right now, and Swagger doing a good job, and you mentioned McNary as well. Frank moved around Darryl Crew, and now tell us Frank with 15 points. See the reaction by Esbury trying to help on the back cut? Shaw spins, lays it off the glass, won't go, and here come the Hilltoppers once more. McNeil, the McNary, under the hoop, and it is blocked by McNeil. McNeil, this time releases. McNeil up and over everybody. McNary's giving him a spark, even though his shot was blocked, got it out there to McNary, or McNary to McNeil. Western Kentucky. With 6-10 remaining in the ballgame, the clock stops, and the Hilltoppers have a five-point lead over West Virginia. What a turn of fortune. Western Kentucky trailing a moment ago by four, enjoying a five-point lead. This is team the defense, the back cut, the jab by Pruden. Look at Asbury come all the way down, shut off the passing lane, regain position on the high post. Impressive, and of course... McNary, I thought, sparked this club a little bit right now. Great block by Pinckney, but he ends up running it down and getting it to McNeil for the goal. West Virginia has not scored from the field in five minutes and 50 seconds now. Oh, push, but he got away. Going to give it to Asbury, but Tyrone Shaw with the shove. Not enough officials out there. <laughs> Now the clock stops with 5.59 remaining. Number three on uh, Brian Asbury, who's played a marvelous game, I think. Shaw gets the first of two. West Virginia now creeping to within four. And here comes Steve Berger. He will replace Wayne Yearwood. Of course, you might look for a little more pressure. And of course, it's a better matchup defensively with the two quick guards on Western Kentucky. 14 points now for Shaw. It's a three-point lead now for the toppers. 2-2-1. Two, two, Disturbing. Quick feet out there. That's McNeil. Nobody even bothers to guard James McNary. Back to the last time he shot, uh, Eisenhower was president. <laughs> Shots too hard, rebounded by West Virginia. You're tough. He gets five a game, five and a half. J.J. Grawl will bring it across. West Virginia still matching up with two people. Everybody else, two men at the man, three matched up. Daryl Brew inside it goes. Shaw off the glass. And that was a call by Catlett. He thought it was a mismatch for Swagger. And here comes Kennard Johnson. 
That's being alert on the bench. That snaps a six minute and 49 second drought. West Virginia without a field goal. They're now to within one. A little offside help shot. The pass almost went in and it's out of bounds for the Mountaineers. Now there is certainly the story. Western Kentucky has come alive. They have doubled the field goal output of West Virginia. But on cue, a turnover by Western Kentucky just when they were going good. Crawl lets it go way short. Has the ball knocked away. Brew had it and then didn't. Dallas Frank goes baseline. He puts it up. It's good. Up He's fan over Daryl Pinkney. And 17 for Frank. And that pass cross court too. Look at Prue. Look at Prue. And that's all West Virginia. They got down quickly. They didn't defend on crawl. The whole sequence, Western Kentucky did not react defensively. Daryl Prue, the sophomore from Washington, D.C., now with 18. Dallas Frank releases on the wing to McNary. McNary trying to go baseline as it cut off by Prue. A lot of dribbling against the zone, isn't there? Nice look. Well, he's done a good job. Great pass. And a terrific effort by Kennard Johnson. Oh, is he aggressive. Now, the hardest thing for kids is to sit on the bench after you've been a starter and then go in and play. A lot of kids take it personally. McNary has been a factor. He's contributed to this run by Western Kentucky. Yeah, that's a point well taken, Bill. Most youngsters who play this caliber of Division I basketball have not only started at the uh, their local high schools, but they were stars mm -hmm. at some of the bigger programs throughout America. And they're easily offended, too, in some cases, but the ones who want to win and have the best interest of the club at heart go out and perform. Western by four. 332 remaining in this game. Little give and go. Berger releases. Could have been called for charging. No whistles. Again, Asbury out there helping out. Crew looking, still looking. Pinkney wants to turn. You got nobody breaking for the hoop, and Crawl wants to start it again. Western's starting to take away that duck in, where they try and shape up in the three-second lane. There's Asbury knocks it away, recovered by Prue. And again, West Virginia comes up with a gem. Crawl lets it go. Oh, who says he who hesitates is lost? Well, he had McNary. He just wanted to make sure he didn't block it on him. West Virginia now trailing by only two, with 2.43 remaining in the game. Asbury wants to turn on Pinkney. Better think again. Turns and lets it go. Too much. Rebounded and a foul on Asbury. Well, that triangle in two. They can call it what they want. I believe that's number four, and then on Asbury. That's the fourth. He has one to go, and 2.33 remaining in the game. They've created problems with that triangle in two, and on the other end, J.J. Kroll, once he pounded it down quickly and set up a sequence here, he's got McNary hesitation, kept the pivot foot. Who said he who stutters is lost, huh? Well, that's the truth. 2.33 remaining in the ball game. West Virginia with a chance to tie. Here's a ball club that is pathetic from the free throw line, hitting only 61%. Tyrone, one of the better ones, right at 74. And he's the guy you don't want to foul. We're tied at 62. 14th time in this game we've been deadlocked. And the red towels are waving behind the Western Kentucky bench. Quick timeout now. Mary Arnold. Well, what began as a marathon 38 minutes ago has come down to a sprint to the finish line. We're tied at 62.
Bill Stone with Bill Raftery. Oh, it has been a dandy. As we said at the outset of our telecast, Bill, the story would be told inside. It would be told with airtight defense, and that is exactly what we have had. And, of course, Ed Stites is here, the rules committee, and he loves the three-point roll. He saw it this afternoon. Loved it. Tonight, he's not seeing it at all. There has been not one three-point play in this evening's ball game. 2.19 to go. Western Kentucky with the basketball tied at 62 all. Man to man now, looks like. Thomas Frank trying to get into the paint, does so. Double team. Oh, what a block by Shaw. Inside again, that's Kennard Johnson. Ball tipped away on the Mountaineers, have the basketball. Darrell Pinckney with the reject. Still the triangle, I believe. Give and go, crawl, finding the baseline occupied, Alex to circle and bring it back out on top. The inside screen by Shaw for Prue. Taken away, McNary, turnover, West Virginia. Prue really caught in that baseline. Would have stepped out of bounds. I think it's still a triangle in two. On McNeil and Telus Frank. McNeil, shot will not go. Asbury, oh, does he go down hard. Out come the Mountaineers. Berger. What a job Tyrone Shaw has done defensively and on the offensive end. Now there's just one minute and five seconds remaining in this one. West Virginia, 62. Western Kentucky, 62. Now, both of these teams, Bill Raftery, came in with tremendous rebound margins. For Western Kentucky, coming into this first round NCAA tournament game, had out-rebounded the opposition by nine. Mm -hmm. Likewise, West Virginia in their games by seven. These are two teams who, as we have talked about throughout this evening's telecast, not only play exceptional offensive basketball in close, but boy, do they sky for it. What, what's intriguing to me is the quickness of West Virginia to the ball. They're not only good rebounders, but they're quick to it. A shot of who's been doing the damage all evening. You might look for, at the end of as much of this 36 seconds that West Virginia would like to use to get it into pro. Unlike Florida earlier today, we are not seeing uh, much scoring from the guards at all. It has been all the big men tonight. Power basketball and some defense we're gonna take a look at now. And this is the rejection. This is the triangle in two. The first one's Tyrone Shaw. The next one's Daryl Pickney. Very alert. Comes over. He's supposed to be on Asbury, but slaps away the attempt by Kennard Johnson. West Virginia, this is their 15th trip to the NCAA tournament. They've been here five times in the last six years. Quite a, uh, quite a compliment to that head coach over there uh, kneeling down, Gail Catlett sure is uh, one of those guys that sneaks up on 20 every year now the teams are back on the court for the final one minute and five seconds of action we're at the carrier dome in syracuse west virginia and western kentucky tied at 62. jj Quall, west virginia in white Here's a problem for West Virginia. Not a good free throw shooting, but you want something close. That's their philosophy. It'll give and go, won't go, and a whistle out front. Not bad when you think of who's going to go to the free throw line. Now the man who has uh, been able to capitalize on only 39% of his free throws on the year, Daryl Prue. And now I'm sure that Gail Catlin, we've talked about missed free throws, talked about tipping the ball back. They have to be alert on the offensive end, and of course, with the poor free throw shooting of Darrell Prue, you see all five Hilltoppers, and they better be ready to squeeze and take the shooter. Prue now, look at that. Not even close, and the Hilltoppers have it. Inside a minute, 45 seconds to play. Right now, you'll probably go down as far as they can. There's different coaching philosophies now. A lot of guys are letting the team set up and stay on the floor, not calling the timeout. Others like to get it to 12, call the timeout. 
21 seconds on the shot clock. 24 seconds on the game clock. McNeil. Still a triangle and two. McNary tries the right wing. Goes baseline to McNeil. They got man to man. Everybody Five matched seconds. up. Four seconds on the shot clock. Tell us Frank, is it up in time? Yes. Rebound to Johnson, and it is rejected. Out of bounds. Western Kentucky will have it. With three seconds remaining in regulation. And Murray Arnold, oh my. He wants a timeout. Darrell Prue recovering. Helping out his club with that block. Three ticks to play. Don't you dare go away. We're tied at 62 apiece. Here's the situation. Three seconds remaining. Western Kentucky and the Mountaineers tied at 62. Bill? Uh, tell us Frank Force for the long shot off balance. Kennard Johnson with a great weak side rebound. But look who's there. The guy who missed the free throw. Daryl Prue. The toppers will have the ball under their own basket. Tell us Frank with the inbounds. Oh, right it's... underneath. Will it go? Yes. Darrell Proof fell asleep and let him step in front of him. Connard Jansen has just won it for the Hilltoppers. Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. And you just saw Kennard Johnson sneak in front of Darrell Prue. Fell asleep for a moment. Tough way to finish the West Virginia season. There's another shot at it. Oh, what an athletic move. Reaching back. And Bill, it is very, very fitting that the game would end on an inside shot. Very, very tough. That's where it was played all night long. And that's where the victory comes. They'll be dancing on the riverbanks in Bowling Green, Kentucky. The final score, Western Kentucky 64. They'll move on. The Mountaineers of West Virginia 62. For Bill Raftery, I'm Phil Stone. So long, everybody. They don't come much better than what we saw here tonight.